Prof, a very good morning to you. Firstly, I want to start off with this question. There's been talk that uh, the coronavirus uh, thrives in cold weather and that, uh, conversely, warm temperature slows its spread. Demystify this for us. Good morning, Kali. Uh, that's a question that should be posed to an epi epidemiologist in the first place. Mm. Um, all that I can say as a climatologist is um, just like is the case for many of the f uh, flu type viruses, there is a strong seasonality in the occurrence. Mm. Um, and they do, uh, of course, the most of the outbreaks for flu do occur in, during the winter season across the world. But um, right now, I mean, I'm not in the position to say whether this is also true for this new coronavirus. And uh, that's outside my field of speciality. I think while we live with this uncertainty of exactly what the attributes of this virus is and where and when it spreads, mm. of course, we should take maximum precaution. So the responsible thing for South Africans to do right now is, of course, also to prepare for the possibility that as we move deeper into winter, mm. the risk of outbreaks may, may increase if this virus behaves similarly to the typical flu. Well, talk to us about uh, the impact of this virus then on the climate change negotiations later this year. There are positive and negative impacts. Firstly, what we are observing right now in, in China specifically is about a 25% reduction in carbon dioxide emissions which is an immense decrease, and China produces about 50% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions. So on the short term, there are some benefits in terms of the battle against climate change, but of course we are all hoping and working towards the time mm. when we will be out of this immediate crisis. And then we will move into the climate change negotiations in uh, November and December this year. These are crucial negotiations because the Paris Agreement is to be implemented in 2020. Mm. And either one or two things can happen, I would say. Um, right now, we are seeing how governments across the world are taking decisive action and, and at immense economic uh, costs. They are protecting the health of the people against the impacts of the spreading coronavirus. Mm. Now, the climate change crisis is also, uh, you can think of it as a very, very big and steadily increasing health crisis. And what we've always been calling for as climate scientists is for decisive action from governments in terms of mitigating climate change. Mm. So it is possible that if we can, can move out of the current crisis around the coronavirus, that spirit of decisive action and coordination and collaboration across the countries of the world can be a decisive factor in November and December Mm. when all the nations of the world need to renew their commitments and their, their targets country by country in terms of reducing carbon dioxide emissions. Yeah. Uh, Prof, uh, to, to your knowledge, I'm sorry to, to cut in, but to your knowledge, do you think or is there some kind of study that has proven that as a result of climate change, there possibly is a link uh, to that with the spread of um, uh, infectious diseases such as the coronavirus? Well, for the coronavirus itself, as I've mentioned, I think that's a, a question to be asked to an epidemiologist. But um, right now, I would say uh, the virus is so new and there's still so much science being done around it right now, learning exactly how it functions and works, that we, we cannot give a definite answer for the coronavirus specifically. Mm. But across the world, um, there are, of course, a great deal of concern about a variety of infectious diseases that can spread to larger regions um, than in the past because of a changing climate. Now, in this case, it's often because of the climate system um, getting hotter in many parts of the world. Mm. And in some parts of the world, for example, in the tropics and the most northern parts of the subtropics, also wetter. Mm. And that, of course, favors many types of diseases spreading. Uh, malaria is one of them. So there are, for example, concerns about malaria reaching parts in the world uh, mm. that it couldn't have reached in the past because it was too cool. Um, but in this case, I think the science is still unclear and um, it, it needs more than a climatologist to, to answer your question. All right. Uh, thank you very much for your time, Professor Francois Engelbrecht. He's a climatologist with the University of Wit Watersrand.